we take inspiration from the Nordics uh, and uh, not only Nordics in general, but also Nordic Africa Institute uh, specifically because it is somewhat a policy instrument for Nordic governments uh, when it comes to their engagements with African countries. Uh, so we are really curious to hear uh, Therese Hjoman de Magnusson presentation, head of uh, Nordic Africa Institute. So Therese, over to you. Thank you so much, Mance, and a very good afternoon to you all. My name is Therese Kornande Magnusson, and I'm the director of the Nordic Africa Institute. I know we're living in an era of digital meetings, and um, uh, fingers crossed that my technology will now work, so I can show you my slides. Um, Mante, can you just confirm that you can see the slides, please? Yes, we do. Seems like it's fine. Okay, very good. So, uh, again, thank you so much for inviting me uh, to your meeting here today. Um, I'm thrilled about the Africo Trilogue project. I, I had the pleasure to, to meet with Lucas and Mante a few days ago, so keeping ourselves uh, aware about these kind of initiatives is absolutely key. So I welcome knowledge sharing and potential partnership. What I'm going to talk about here today very briefly is to give you a, a little bit of a, an overview of the process ending up in the establishment of the Nordic Africa Institute, but also say a few words about where we are today and what direction we are taking. And uh, I'm really looking forward to the questions, comments, reflections towards the end. I'll be happy to elaborate on whatever questions you might have. I should also say that uh, the information I have is that the slides will be shared with you afterwards. So the origin of the Nordic Africa Institute, we are based in Uppsala, just north of Stockholm in Sweden. The Nordic Council started the discussions in about 1961 and realized that there was a need to establish uh, a format to share experiences and training possibilities for Nordic experts who were at the time very involved and engaged and working in the development sector broadly, uh, but also that there was a need to establish a Nordic Institute to gather and disseminate information, conduct research and analysis, and also to promote training activities to inform policy decision making in the Nordics. So what did the formal process look like? And this uh, stretched over two, three years, all in all. So starting in 1961, a Nordic committee uh, of ministers investigated the issue to start with uh, on behalf of the Nordic Council. And they concluded that there was a need for, um, hang on, <laughs> so. Uh, there was a need to establish a regional platform to discuss these issues and to create also a division of labour between the Nordic countries, who were all of them very engaged in supporting development in the global south. The Swedish representative of this committee um, agreed to try and establish an African institute in Sweden on behalf of the Nordic countries. At the same time, Denmark showed interest in establishing an institute focusing on Asia. And some of you might be aware that there is actually a Nordic A Asia Institute in Copenhagen uh, working on similar aspects as we do, a little bit more focusing on research today uh, solely. So, after this, that the Swedish representative uh, agreed that to look into the uh, aspect of establishing an institute in Sweden, a formal motion was raised in the Swedish parliament. Uh, and that led 
to the development of a official report argumenting for the need to establish a Nordic Africa Institute based not only on Sweden's interest to engage and understand better um, in terms of development cooperation, but also it was expressed that there was an interest to establish an institute to explore areas of possible export and investments on the African continent. In this report, it was also uh, proposed and recommended because of the direction uh, of the Institute that it would be established in Uppsala, where we are all um, still based, mm -hmm. and associated with Uppsala University, uh, one of the largest and uh, with the longest history uh, um, universities in Sweden in order to draw on both present uh, research and collections of literature. We still host one of the largest special libraries on contemporary African literature in the Nordic region. The Institute formally started in 1962-1963, uh, but it was not until 1964, just after that, that we received the first formal government instruction. So as from 1964, we are formally a Swedish public agency, but with funding from several Nordic governments. This means that uh, we uh, apply Swedish law uh, and um, we report to the Swedish Minister of Foreign Affairs. And that is still the case. I will come back to that later. Now, every organization, every institute changes over time, and so has the Nordic Africa Institute, adapting to what's happening around us in the world. So there has been uh, a slight shift uh, in focus of the institute, and the number of Nordic partners have changed slightly over time. In 19, no, sorry, in 2013, Denmark uh, decided to withdraw their funding, and Norway did the same two years later in 2015. And the reason was uh, there were apparently I wasn't working for NIA at the time, but there were uh, a couple of reasons, uh, budgetary, political ones. But one argument that was raised was that Denmark and Norway wanted to work more with um, support to research institutes on the African continent. So the second bullet point. Uh, that the focus of our institute has more or less shifted from the original idea of training experts and sharing uh, very practical uh, oriented expertise and knowledge to producing research to inform development policy. And I would say that we are, uh, we have moved a little bit further in that direction. Today, our focus is to bridge science and policy, but also bringing different development perspectives to the fore. So for the final part of my presentation here uh, today, I'm going to just emphasize a few things uh, in what we are today and where we are going. At the moment, the Nordic Africa Institute has a, an institutional strategy covering 2017 until this year, 2021. So we are right now in the midst of developing our new five-year institutional strategy. Very exciting work, a very inclusive process uh, internally, but where we also engage our external partners to receive input. So as from next year, we will start implementing our next strategy. We're still, as I uh, just said, we're still governed by Swedish law. We're Swedish public uh, agency, a research-led public agency. 
And uh, we are reporting, uh, as I said, uh, to the Minister of Foreign Affairs. But within the structure of the Swedish law governing public institutions, we need to have a board. And in our case, we have a council, a program and research council that advises formally me on the direction of the institute which means that I don't formally report to the council, but they advise me, kind of an advisory board. So I report uh, formally to the State Secretary of International uh, Development Corporation. We have currently funding uh, about 75% from Sweden and the rest is from Finland and Iceland. However, we have a member in our council uh, representing Norway, and we have strong academic collaboration both in Denmark and in Norway still. And I see a shift now, speaking of, of Nordic collaboration, there is a, an emerging um, um, uh, interest to re-engage uh, in the Nordic Africa Institute and Development Corporation broadly from all the Nordic countries. We produce and disseminate independent research, but today we also have a, a strong um, mandate to engage researchers, thought leaders, policy makers in an evidence based dialogue on development on the African continent. We formally are instructed to advise and inform uh, Nordic decision makers, which means that we uh, very much uh, see ourselves as translating scientific analysis on social changes on the African continent. So we combine both the production of knowledge, uh, high quality research, but we also have uh, a strong department internally um, of communication, skilled communication work, and that really is a huge benefit in terms of uh, tailoring and messaging research into policy advice. We have a wide uh, network of partners, but also former scholars uh, who have been guest researchers at the Nordic Africa Institute. And we host a unique library collection on contemporary Africa that I mentioned before. So altogether, that gives us kind of a unique infrastructure to engage on Africa issues in the Nordic countries, uh, bringing knowledge from the continent and from us and partners to the Nordic policy space. Last but not least, in order to understand the underlying causes of development in Africa and elsewhere, the understanding of how norms and interests, power structures, influences societal changes at the very core. Our mandate is to provide research and analysis in social sciences and humanities. And we study societies and the relationships between people within societies, from the very grassroots level to the level of the African Union, always with the strong emphasis and ambition to bring forward African perspectives and African voices and knowledge. So in essence, capturing depth on what really motivates people enables us to understand better how change in, in uh, actually takes place in practice. So how do we engage uh, with Nordic policymakers? Of course, we do that in many different ways um, through dialogue events, uh, small settings, larger events, but we also do tailored briefings. Uh, we provide policy advice through, for example, policy notes where we really try and continuously improve how we message uh, and translate research into advice and inf information. But uh, beyond that, we of course also do many other um, 
types of publications, academic publications, but also, for example, current African issues with different themes. We work through networks and partners and uh, we continuously try and elevate and put forward uh, analysis from others, always with open access in mind. So we, uh, we nurture relationships with Nordic policymakers, advisors to decision makers, different levels of and structures of uh, change agents. We provide um, both formal channels of communication and informal ones. We provide trend analysis, the short-term analysis, with empirical long-term evidence-based research. And uh, since we are in, in this meeting and you will be continuing to discuss the EU-Africa-Baltics uh, collaboration and how to engage, um, we have done uh, a few events uh, recently and um, because Sweden is going to take over uh, the presidency of uh, um, become president of the European Union in 2023. There is a lot ongoing in preparing for that, of course, uh, in Sweden. But generally, uh, in the Nordic countries, I, as I'm sure you're aware, uh, the European Union is the main entry point in terms of foreign policy. So therefore, we are um, monitoring uh, without being very deeply involved from a research perspective in the EU-Africa uh, partnership. What we have done recently, just a few examples, we have uh, hosted a thought leader event, which is available on our webpage, uh, with thought leaders from Africa and the Nordics and Europe. Uh, we have done a study on Pan-Africanism, uh, also available on our webpage. And we are, at the moment, actually, you can find an analysis of the Pan-African trade agreement um, on our webpage as well. So without having EU-Africa uh, partnership as a, an entry point for our empirical research, we are very much covering it through the, the lens of other thematic priorities. One uh, important uh, part of our work is also to connect to the diplomatic community of the Nordic countries. That means that we do tailored briefings to uh, ambassadors, Nordic ambassadors, before they go uh, to their country uh, um, where they will be based. But also, meanwhile, we are actually next week uh, doing a, a brown bag lunch for one of the Swedish embassies uh, in Africa, uh, based on an uh, issue-focused uh, uh, thematic area of interest to them and to us. So we're trying to nurture those kind of relationships too. These are some examples from what we have done recently. At the moment, we do these and um, briefings uh, only virtually. So with that, um, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to share our experience. This was uh, a very brief um, presentation, of course, but I, I want to emphasize again that I think what I know so far from the Trilog project, I think it's uh, the approach is, is very interesting. It aligns very well with the values we have in entering into a, a policy, research, practice, uh, action-oriented um, advice uh, perspective, and I think that's very highly rele relevant. Um, there are, of course, many areas of potential collaboration. Uh, we are quite a small institute, so we depend on partners, but we also need to be careful in, in how we engage so that we can really bring value to our partners and likewise. But I will think I'll stop there, stop sharing and open up for any questions, reflections and comments. Thank you so much. Thank you, Therese. It was uh, definitely very uh, interesting and uh, 
I'm not sure inspiring or somewhat discouraging, I would say, uh, to some extent, just thinking how long uh, the Nordic Africa Institute has been operating. And I guess this is also a message for the Baltics when thinking, you know, what meaningfully uh, we can do and that it takes quite some time to become this knowledge powerhouse that uh, I would say Nordic Africa Institute is now in 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 Nordic countries, but I see we have uh, a question uh, from Antanas Mozilauskas, so uh, I will allow uh, Antanas to, to say it out loud. Yeah, thank you, Teresa. It was interesting to discover that Nordic countries have an institute for, for <laughs> Africa, uh, Nordic countries which have a most active in development cooperation, and especially Sweden has, having the the largest share of GDP for development cooperation projects. Myself, I, I'm former rector of Agriculture University. We are still keeping very active in development cooperation projects. In uh, Europe, we do have the Agri Natura, which is the alliance of universities and the research institutes for research for development. Uh, as you said, you are combining different efforts, uh, different uh, yeah, policy and, and research for, for Africa. Are you also trying to combine the efforts of different actors in research from universities, from research institutes for the benefit of uh, or getting a larger synergy? Thank you very much. Thank you. Mante, uh, you have to guide me. Should we take a couple of questions or should I respond? I think you can respond. Okay. Thank you so much for a very relevant question. Uh, that changes, of course, over time and we need to also adhere to our government instruction, guiding us what to focus on, um, not in terms of thematic priorities, that is completely up to us, but and how we work. So uh, we work with a number of uh, research facilities, institutes. Um, we work also with think tanks uh, on the continent. I would say primarily, also historically, um, academic institutions have been our major entry point. To, so collaborating with universities uh, has been in focus. Uh, but also networks of scholars such as in Africa, Codestria, for example, which is a, uh, a network of academic um, uh, scholars. So it, it really depends. I would say it is always a priority to, um, we, so let me take one step back. Our mandate is not uh, to uh, give operational advice on uh, how to actually implement. But we do work with uh, the, uh, development research. So I hope that re uh, responded to your question. So a, a wide variety of actors, yes. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Okay, do we have more questions? Uh, if not, I have one. <laughs> I don't see any raised hands, so I guess I can I can just ask, uh, sort of following up on on my comment just after your presentation, that it takes so much time to build that knowledge and to create an institution that can produce knowledge. So, could you think of any suggestions for the Baltics as relatively new actors within this um, EU Africa relations? So, where do we start? What would be the right way of starting? Also having in mind that the EU-Africa relations have some negative context uh, as well and how we can bring this fresh perspective that Baltics perhaps can, can offer. Thank you, Mante. Um, not an easy question, uh, highly relevant. Uh, so I'll, I don't have a, a clear answer. I would say that there are, uh, as you already know, there are many dimensions, complexities, challenges, but also opportunities with the EU-Africa partnership, future partnership. Um, I think the Nordics, but also the Baltics, have kind of a, a, a different possibility in that we don't really have the historic legacy uh, as colonial powers. So I think finding uh, right alliances 
to enable and put forward um, strengthen African agency in the dialogue and conversations between EU and Africa and uh, be clear about interests. That's what we have received as a feedback. For example, the high level event that uh, I moderated in November last year between thought leaders from Africa and the, and the Nordic region. Make sure that you are uh, upfront uh, with what the interests are uh, and be uh, a careful listener and be, make sure that you can, you are able to do trade-offs. Um, so it's a um, creating a space of respectful um, mutual uh, dialogue on equal terms. And that's why I think the Baltics, but also the Nordic countries, have a, uh, have a different role to play, but how to make that more visible, that's the next step. And I think that's potentially also what the Nordics and the Baltics could collaborate on, as we do already in the World Bank for us and other uh, for us, as you know. So uh, those were some of, of uh, the reflections from my end, but it's really taking a different step now. Yes, I think the, the very interesting thing that uh, you mentioned or also relevant uh, for the Baltics is that EU is the main entry point, which is definitely for the Baltics when we think of uh, engaging African countries, that EU is that platform. And I take note about the uh, visibility uh, and the effort to bring the perspective, perspective forward. And I also take note uh, of the Sweden's presidency in 2023. Perhaps uh, this could be an, an opportunity for some sort of um, Baltic uh, engagement together with the Nordics, since to some extent we are uh, similar actors. Though, of course, Nordic countries have a much longer history of engaging uh, African partners. Uh, so, just looking at uh, at the time, uh, I think we will uh, have to stop now with the first part uh, and have a few minutes break before we move to the Lithuanian uh, part, but I really want to thank you, Tres, for making the time for joining us. Uh, I hope that uh, our Lithuanian uh, stakeholders heard uh, and got inspired uh, by the work you do. And uh, I think that, uh, I mean, I understand that uh, Nordic Africa Institute is, of course, uh, a Swedish public agency, small and targeted, uh, but perhaps there are ways how uh, Baltics can also benefit uh, from the knowledge that is produced by the Nordic Africa Institute. So Absolutely. thank you so much. Thank you. And it was truly my pleasure. I look forward to staying in contact.